Hello, everyone. Uh, it's my great pleasure to present my paper titled Taxonomy Completion via Implicit Concept Insertion. Uh, I am Jing Chuan, and this is a joint project between University of Oxford and eBay. So this is the agenda for the day. And, and without further ado, let's start with taxonomies. So we have a very good idea of what they are. Right? Intuitively, taxonomies are the classification system of things. And mathematically, they are they can consider them as directed acyclic graphs, where every node is some kind of concept, and every edge is an is a relationship between the concepts. So, let's say you build a taxonomy, and as it grows in your domain to a certain point, you notice that it will start to have holes. Now, what does I mean? Well. Let's illustrate with this uh, very simple example of a, a mini snippet of taxonomy with only seven concepts. So up here we have the root, which is clothing, shoes, and accessories, abbreviated CSA. Just keep that abbreviation in mind. Um, down there we have sp it's split into men and women, and f each one is split along clothing and shoes. There's obviously accessories, but let's forget that for the time being. Now. It's obvious that we are splitting at level two along gender and level three along product type. So someone might ask you, why cannot I do it the other way? Why can't I do product type at level two and gender at level three? The answer is that's totally fine. And that way you get two new level twos, clothing and shoes. And notice that the taxonomy doesn't say you have something called clothing or shoes, but we obviously know they exist. They must exist because the, the context of the other seven concepts say so. And we also have a very good idea of where these concepts belong and um, what are their contents. So, well, you could say this is rather boring. We're just shuffling these concepts around. How is that interesting? Well, it gets more profound than that. So in this case, we have the CSA, we have a um, new branch called Sporting Goods, and here I'm omitting a lot of intermediate concepts and siblings, but basically this is a much larger taxonomy. And if you study this much larger structure, you can arrive at the existence of something called Sporting Shoes. And here, not only do we know that it's called Sporting Shoes, we also know that it's a subconcept of CSA, of sporting goods, and it contains all these different kinds of shoes, men's, women's, cycling, snowshoes, as their content. So in this case, you could say uh, this new thing is not just shuffling concepts around, it's actually acting as a bridge between two very distant branches of the taxonomy. And it's we know that they exist and that they are helpful. It's time to give them a name. We call them implicit concepts. So basically, it's a missing concept that we know it exists and we know its semantics pretty well just by inferring from wh what's around it. And this gives us this new challenge, which is, hey, I have a taxonomy. and. All I can see are the explicit concepts, right? The existing ones. But I want you to give me the implicit concepts and you know, find find me as many as you can. And this turns out to be an awkwardly hard problem because, well, where do you even start? Well, you have to do a couple of things. The first is that you have to be somehow aware that, hey, maybe if you zoom in at this local subgraph of the taxonomy. Uh, it could be hinting at some implicit concepts. You have to build some vague conceptualization of it. And then you have to turn that intuition into a concrete labeled thing. So you have to predict its name. And remember in the case of sporting shoes, not only did we have its name, we also had a very good understanding of what are its super concepts and sub concepts. So you have to do that as well, you know, find the implicit concept parent and children. So which one of these three subtasks is the hardest? Well, by far it's the first one. Right? It's very vague. You could, in a sense, argue that it's not even totally well-defined. But uh, there is a way. 
And the approach that we've taken is to treat these implicit concepts as unions of existing ones. So again, considering our examples, clothing and sporting shoes, if you just take a look at the taxonomy, this tiny one with seven concepts, you see that men's clothing, women's clothing, kids' clothing, all, all these things have clothing in common. So already that's a huge giveaway that maybe we can create uh, some common parent ranging over all of them. And likewise, sporting shoes can be arrived from a similar procedure, but this time it's a much more diverse collection of, of things. So with this uh, perspective of taking the union, it makes things much more simple and it uh, gives it inspiration to our solution, which is basically a fully automated system for uh, completing the taxonomy by finding these implicit concepts. It's called ICON, standing for implicit concept insertion. And, and this diagram below here is just how it works. It might be a bit uh, frightening to no, at the first glance, but we'll take it step by step. Uh, first of all, the high-level strategy of ICON, uh, as is always good with any research problem, <coughs> when you have this tough challenge, you try to uh, break it down into more digestible parts. So for the hardest implicit concept identification problem, since we already have this idea that we're going to treat them as unions of um, explicit concepts, all we have to do is find a bunch of sets. And if you know techniques from information retrieval, you can retrieve a bunch of those sets. So basically, we are reducing this to an entity retrieval problem, which is much more well studied and manageable. And next, regarding name generation, well, again, we already know that they're just sets. So you have a set of labels. You need one label that kind of summarizes them, this is really just text summary. And language models, as we know them, handle these text, this task really well. And finally, for uh, the task of concept insertion, you could treat this. It's not the only solution, but we've decided to take it as a series of subsumption prediction tests. Subsumption here just means the edge between an you know, ASR relationship, parent child, however you put it. So now let's actually dive into this diagram. Um, the way ICON works, think of it as two nested loops. There's this outer loop, which corresponds to you know, this highlighted portion. Hopefully you see my mouse here um, hovering over this bit. Um, you always start from a seed. This seed is anything you like. If you don't know which one, just you know, choose one at random. And everything revolves around this seed, you know, subsequently. And once you have it, you try to build a cluster. If you remember this step one, you have to look, zoom in, a local structure of the taxonomy, find something interesting. This is exactly what I'm talking about. So uh, we have this cluster. This is going to be processed by the inner loop where you, you, take, you basically take this sledge and hammer approach of um, brute force enumerating each subset of this cluster and you know, treat each set as a candidate of implicit concept. Now, just because you have a candidate doesn't mean it's a sensible implicit concept ready. It could be just a collection of garbage. Uh, in order to verify that, you could try using a language model to give it a name. And Maybe the model rejects to, to generate anything, in which case you, you know that you've got some, some false signal here. Um, otherwise, it does generate something. Now you know that you have some kind of implicit concept, and you ha just have to plug it into this uh, in the insertion algorithm, which will decide where it belongs, where it's, what it is home, and what is its content. Here we are employing one algorithm called enhanced traversal. So again, uh, uh, this is just a running example of how ICON works. So here we choose the seed men's vintage t-shirts, and we retrieve a cluster around it. The, the machine learning model we've chosen chooses these four. So together, it's a cluster of five. And we 
take the sledgehammer approach, enumerating all the subsets. Let's just say we ch mm, it's the term for this particular subset, which contains of two se two concepts: men's vintage t-shirts, men's western show shirts. It's gonna be something, right? It's gonna be an implicit concept. What is name? Well, turns out to be shirt. This is what the language model generated. It seems sensible. Now let's plug it into the enhanced traversal algorithm, which is basically a two-stage BFS. You start from the top down, looking for the most specific parent concept, and then you do it. You, know, you mirror image it from bottom up, starting from the roots, search for the most general child concepts. And again, the atomic test of whether you know, given two concepts is a, a parent of B, this has to be completed by some machine learning model. So he, this diagram here just shows how shirt you know, gets uh, ru runs through this enhanced traversal algorithm, and in the end, the search results look like this. And and finally, you you get these results, you update the taxonomy, and just as a side note, it's okay if you get something that's both a parent and a child. That basically means A is a subset of B, and B is a subset of A, which means A equals B. So uh, the exact models uh, we've used, as you can see, these are basically uh, transformers or, or T5s. You could argue they're a bit antiquated uh, for, for 2024, because this work is being done between 2022 and 2023. So if you plug in much better models like Llama 3, uh, it's going to improve qualitatively. So uh, we don't have much time left. Let's, let's just quickly go through the evaluation. Uh, one big pinpoint of this is because this is a very under-researched topic, if I'm allowed to say that. So there are not a lot of baselines. We have this Gen Taxo algorithm no, from a KDD paper, but it's not designed for the implicit concept task. So it's not fully compatible. And as a side baseline, we also included a way to prompt ChatGPT last year version on, on, the, on the API and, and tried you know, to let it do the same thing. And this is our data set. It's just two e-commerce taxonomies. And basically, uh, it's quite impressive that our model, if you remember, it used three pretty weak language models. But to, all together, with this uh, framework, it's able to outcompete ChatGPT, which is arguably much stronger. So uh, in conclusion, we've, dis we've observed taxonomy have this problem, uh, that we've studied this, thing, this phenomenon called implicit concept, and that it is very useful. Uh, we propose this task of implicit concept completion, and we offer our solution icon. It has a modular design. It's very, very flexible and extensible, and it's performed quite strongly. Yeah. So, on, and finally, I'd uh, like to give special thanks to uh, some of our really excellent eBay fellow who unfortunately didn't make it to the list of co-authors, Ishita, Lizzie, Ken, who, who is actually in the audience, say hi, and Tan Ran. So um, thank you guys very much. And